Office, industrial, retail, and multifamily have long been considered the four major food groups in commercial real estate, but each of these asset classes is also broken down into several different subcategories which tend to stay out of the spotlight. And while general product types like industrial and multifamily have seen massive growth over the last year, there are a few other sectors of the industry that haven't gotten as much credit for some significant rent and value increases posted in 2021. And with that, if you're looking for some untapped opportunity during a time where it feels like all commercial real estate seems to be priced to perfection, in this video, let's walk through three of the hottest alternative real estate product types today that you might not be considering and where the opportunity might lie in each heading into the new year. So 2020 and 2021 have seen some of the fastest changes the real estate industry has ever experienced in large part because the way things are done among businesses and consumers is just different now than it was in 2019. This has led to a massive spike in demand for many real estate asset classes that before this were kind of flying under the radar, but now have become some of the most sought after property types throughout the entire industry. So to dig into what these property types actually are, let's go through three lesser known asset classes that are still somewhat alternative within the commercial real estate space and why you might want to consider investing or working in each. So to start this list off, let's jump into what might be the hottest sector on this list, which is life sciences. Life sciences properties are office or industrial assets that are specifically built to accommodate users like biotech firms, pharmaceutical companies, medical device and equipment manufacturers, or digital healthcare providers creating software, sensors, or even wearable devices. From February to April of 2020, a time when most of the US economy was contracting in a really big way, the life sciences workforce only fell by 2.5%, while the rest of the US workforce saw a 14% drop during this time. But this industry resiliency isn't actually new, and job growth in the life sciences sector was extremely strong well before 2020 even began, clocking in at 16% between April of 2017 and June of this year, which is higher than even the technology sector during this time. And in one of the most prominent parts of the life sciences sector, biotech, the US has seen 79% job growth since 2013, compared to only 42% for all employment sectors. Demand for innovation in life sciences has been a major national focus over the past few decades, but this has ramped up even more in recent years with government research funding from the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, growing by an average of 8.9% annually from 2016 through 2020. And over the past few years, interest from the for-profit sector has also grown significantly in this space, and according to Cushman and Wakefield, $70 billion of public and private capital moved into the life sciences space in 2020 compared to the previous record of just $36 billion in 2018. And if you compare those numbers to the almost $33 billion raised in just the first quarter of 2021 alone, we're really starting to see some exponential growth within this property type. And with this, not surprisingly, this has all resulted in the demand for life sciences real estate going through the roof. And according to CBRE, rents for lab and R&D space have jumped by over 30% just since the beginning of 2018 in San Francisco, San Diego, and Boston. And in just the past nine months, Washington DC and Philadelphia have both seen life science rent increases of over 20%. With so much demand in this space, I see a massive opportunity in both the acquisition and development of life science real estate heading into next year. And if you're looking for a hot sector to jump into right now, there are very few opportunities that are going to be more attractive than the life sciences sector. Now, next up, if life sciences real estate isn't your thing, another alternative asset class that has been on fire in recent years is the cold storage sector. 
Cold storage space is exactly what it sounds like, essentially consisting of either chilled warehouses kept just above freezing temperatures or frozen warehouses kept at below zero temperatures. And obviously the demand for grocery delivery has accelerated the growth in this space, but aside from just food storage, cold storage facilities are also used to store medical supplies and biopharmaceuticals, including vaccines, which have obviously been front and center throughout the majority of this year. And what's interesting about this space is that even though this is one of the quickest growing sectors in all of commercial real estate, it still makes up a relatively small amount of the general industrial sector as a whole, which means this asset class still has lots of room to run and the ability to grow from here. According to Avis and Young, cold storage space accounts for just 1.1% of the total U.S. industrial market, with over 17% of all cold storage product located in just five major markets, including New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Chicago, and Dallas. And with the average cold storage supply facility in the U.S. at 34 years of age and the demand for grocery delivery and other cold storage uses ramping up in areas outside of just the most heavily populated metros in the U.S., I see a huge opportunity in both the development of new product in emerging markets across the country and redevelopment of existing facilities in established markets like New York and Los Angeles. And finally, the last product type on this list and potentially the most popular of all three of these sectors right now is the single family home rental space. At the same time that a huge portion of the millennial population has finally started to settle down and remote work has become more and more mainstream and more permanent, people who would have traditionally been able and willing to live in smaller apartment spaces have now found themselves needing an additional room for an office or more space for kids going to school remotely, which has led to a surge in demand for detached single family homes. However, because of all this new demand, coupled with huge spikes in materials cost, which has delayed the delivery of many single family home communities, for sale housing prices in the US have gone crazy growing by almost 18% year over year in August, resulting in many would-be homeowners being priced out of the market. But this has also directly impacted demand in the for rent single family home space with asking rents for single family homes increasing by 14.3% year over year in September, according to Yardi Matrix, which was the highest year over year increase on record since 2016. And even though this is the national average, many lower cost of living, high growth markets have seen rent growth figures far in excess of the national numbers with Austin, Atlanta, and Phoenix all seeing year over year growth of over 20% and Tampa and Miami seeing annual growth numbers of over 30%. The single family for rent sector is also seeing huge interest from institutions with major private equity firms like Blackstone, KKR, and Invesco making significant investments into the space over the past few years. And according to CBRE, equity investments into this asset class totaled $6.3 billion in the first quarter of this year, up from only $2.6 billion in all of 2020 and just $1 billion in all of 2019. Ultimately, in all of these sectors, I see a huge amount of opportunity heading into the new year, whether you're looking to invest in real estate directly and trying to buy your own deals, or if you're trying to land a job in the industry and want to target a growing real estate niche when you're first starting out. And if you're willing to jump into a product type that isn't quite as common as the traditional food groups that most real estate professionals feel most comfortable with, I see a huge opportunity here to become a specialist and really a subject matter expert in a growing space and to significantly boost your earning potential and career prospects long term. And if you are trying to break into the commercial real estate industry and you want some more help tightening up your technical skill set or just in navigating the application and interview process, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Break Into CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, our entire library of pre-built acquisition, development, and waterfall models for multifamily, 
office, retail, and industrial properties, and you'll also have access to private one-on-one -on -one email based career coaching if you're looking to break into a top real estate private equity brokerage or lending shop and want some additional guidance and feedback along the way and if you like this video and want to see more content on this channel on the state of the market and different commercial real estate property types make sure to hit the like button to let me know and let me know in the comments any other niche product types that you'd want to see covered on the channel as always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week and I'll see you in the next video.